In this LM02A notebook, we are going to be using a cloud-based vector database called Pinecone. It has a free tier that we can gain access to, which is what we'll be doing uh, shortly. It's a cloud-based database solution that offers us a lot of simplicity and scalable similarity search. Before we get going, make sure that you have a couple of dependencies installed. The first is the Pinecone client, and the second is a Spark connector jar file. You will need to attach this jar file onto your Databricks cluster. If you need more directions, feel free to consult the documentation link here and also pause this video if you need some time. If not, you can go ahead and pip install the Pinecone client and also run the classroom setup script. And again, feel free to pause this video and come back once you are ready with your classroom environment. Once the classroom setup script is done, we can now proceed to set up our Pinecone free tier account. So you can go to their homepage, click on the top right corner over here to sign up for a free account. And then once you are in the console, you will be able to navigate to this API key section where you can where you can copy two different values. First is the environment value. Second is your API key. Copy both of these values and put them in the cell below where it says fill in. For me, I'm going to grab my Pinecone credentials from Databricks secret scope. And then initiate the client uh, with Pinecone. Next, we are going to read in the data frame that we'll be using for this notebook, which is the same data that you have seen in the lecture about news articles. For Pinecone, we need to generate the embeddings first before we can save it out to Pinecone index. And there are two ways of doing it. We'll go through both of them. The first is using Pandas data frame, which is when we apply a single node embedding model and then write the data out to Pinecone in batches. That process can also be called as upsert. The second method is to stick to a Spark data frame as we have originally, but use Pandas API through Pandas UTFs to help us apply the embedding model on batches of data. So let's go through the first method. We are going to be using a subset of the data frame to speed up the rest of the notebook execution. If you have used Pinecone before, you will need to delete the existing index before you can create a new Pinecone index because the Pinecone free tier only allows for one index. And just like a lecture notebook, we'll be using the sentence transformer library and I will cache it to a folder. CMD18 here contains the command to delete the index if it has already existed before. Next, we can finally create a Pinecone index. In this creation step, we will specify the index name, which is what we have specified above. And then we are also going to specify the embedding dimension. Here, we are getting embedding dimension from the model itself. We can also optionally choose to specify the similarity metric as well. Here, we'll stick to cosine similarity. And then we can finally establish a connection to the Pinecone index. This is a step that might take up to three minutes. So if you see this running command for a long time, don't worry, you are not stuck. Now let's look at the following cell. Once the index has been created, we can finally write data out to the Pinecone index. Here you can see that since we are using a pandas data frame, we are going to look through batches of data records in the data in the pandas data frame itself. And you will find that this workflow is not too different from the lecture notebook, where we first create a list of the IDs for each of the news articles. And we also provide the metadata for each news article, followed by generating embeddings for the articles that we have. And then finally, insert them 
to pinecone index. Indeed, you will see that we have a thousand vectors in total in the pinecone index because we only have provided pinecone a thousand records to write out. So now that all the vectors are available, we can query the index directly. You will see that I am writing a query about fish and the same process also follows on my query as well, where the query is, is first converted into a vector and then it can be submitted to pinecone to retrieve any relevant context. And here we're only looking at the top three nearest neighbors. And indeed, we're seeing relevant results being returned to fish, uh, such as news about massive fish kill, about sharks, and about earth earthworm gin. So this could indicate that all of the thousand articles that we have, there are just not that many news articles about fish after all. The second method is to stick to using a Spark data frame but use pandas UDF to process the data frame and convert the text into vectors. And then lastly, write it out directly to PyScoring using Spark. So pandas UDF is a type of vectorized UDF that allows you to apply a function on batches of data at a time. If you're interested in reading more about pandas UDF, I invite you to check out the documentation that I've linked in this markdown cell. Generally, it is a very efficient way of using Spark because you are able to preserve your pandas syntax within your pandas UDF, but allow Spark to distribute the function across the entire data frame. For instance, in this cell here, we are using a pandas UDF where we load the model and then for each batch of the data that we have sent to Spark, it is going to convert the text into embedding vectors. In this following cell, we are going to pass our pandas UDF function to the Spark data frame. As you can see over here, this is the pandas UDF function that we have defined, and then we have also supplied the name of the column that needs transformation, and then we are renaming this column to vector. We're additionally constructing two new columns that is expected by Pinecone, namely namespace and also metadata. In a namespace column, we're going to put in the type of a transformer that we have passed in, and in metadata, we're going to supply the topic information. Now that we have the data frame available, we can inspect the results. So we see there are four different columns, ID, embedding vectors, the namespace column, and lastly, the metadata column. Now we are going to repeat the same step that we have done before in method one to delete the existing index and recreate the index. If you remember from before, this is a step that can take up to three minutes. After you have successfully connected to Pinecone index, you can now proceed with writing data out to Pinecone index. Here we are using the Spark data frame writer method so you can see that we're no longer observing the data in batches, rather we're passing in the entire Spark data frame. You will also need to supply the credentials to connect to PyCon as well. So go ahead and run this cell. Also note that this is very important for you where you actually have a Spark PyCon connector. If you don't have it ready in the cluster, then this cell would fail. This wraps up our discussion on how to use Pinecone and Databricks.